So hello everybody. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I see the, uh, um, the, the more and more seats are taken. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I have quite some trip here. I come from, uh, from Munich, Germany. So uh, the flight was uh, quite long. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I think Alan, I'm probably one of the, the farthest away here, right? Uh, so yeah, but uh, that, that's how it is. Um, the Bitcoin community is very international and uh, people are all over the world and especially for the company I'm traveling quite a lot. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's, let's come to the topic. Uh, we're here to speak about very uh, something very exciting. We have heard uh, at the beginning um, a very nice uh, speech about the potential and about the use case of Bitcoin, which was very interesting. Then we had in the panel the uh, more uh, regulatory side. Uh, now I'm glad to, to uh, tell you a little bit about mining, but also uh, come back to the, the regulatory uh, perspective. Um, that is quite uh, important. Let me please uh, ask you up front, um, who among you, uh, I, you already did it, but uh, 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 you did it, um, who, who is uh, interested in mining and who has invested uh, in mining before? Oh man, wow, that's a lot, very good, okay. So, um, yeah, then uh, I think then this is very important for you, um, and uh, let's get started. Alan? <laughs> oh, here, uh, here we go. Okay, perfect. So, all right. Um, yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, the presentation will be, as I said, uh, about mining and uh, large scale, specifically in cloud mining uh, um, uh, com companies uh, and um, the regulatory perspective. So, uh, a lot of you uh, have already um, heard about mining, but um, I think it might be appropriate. Uh, although it's not on the slide, to, to summarize uh, and, and, uh, and um, introduce uh, what mining is uh, for everybody. Uh, just a, a few sentences so that we're all on the same page. Um, so, um, as you know, Bitcoin is a decentralized uh, public ledger and uh, it's a decentralized system. Um, and uh, compared to, for example, MasterCard or Visa, those are central systems, so that means that uh, the con transaction. If you're paying something with uh, with your credit card, there is a trusted uh, there's a uh, a trusted party in the center who is validating the transaction. So you have to trust Mastercard that ev everything is going well. For the Bitcoin, the, the key innovation is that uh, this is this trusted entity is not necessary, and um, there is a decentralized consensus. Uh, it's a decentralized consensus system, and that, that basically means that there is no central, uh, no trusted third party, it's left out and consensus and trust is generated in the system. And this, and that's a critical point, is done by mining. So miners are there to, tra to validate Bitcoin transactions, that's a, that's a critical point. So that also means that it's most important and it wouldn't work. So that's very important. And um, yeah, and mining uh, and mining has uh, has done in the beginning fr from Satoshi who mined all the coins um, with his laptop. Uh, the, the the industry grew, of course, um, because um, it was Bitcoin was programmed in a way um, to give an incentive for people to mine. Because <laughs> if uh, no one would, uh, I mean, people would ask themselves, why should I mine uh, to, to to validate transactions? What, what do I get from it? So the Bitcoin uh, system was programmed in a way that at the moment it is giving out about 3,600 Bitcoins per day to all the miners. And that gives the miners the incentive to, to do it and to get a reward. And, um, and of course, this, uh, as the price and uh, as the market is growing, uh, the, market, uh, the mining market and the industry is growing as well. And the mining farms got bigger and bigger and it went from uh, home mining from people who mined with their laptops uh, to now huge facilities um, processing uh, Bitcoin transactions, so to say. And 
it has been so crazy now that I would say about 75% of the whole Bitcoin processing power and mining power uh, is uh, based on uh, single facilities that you can count on maybe in two, two hands. So, um, and uh, yeah, we uh, have started our business uh, more than a year ago and uh, we have established uh, ourselves as one of the biggest uh, players in this market and uh, we have uh, quite some bigger facilities um, that uh, you will also see. But uh, I'm not here to talk uh, uh, more, uh, all the time about the company, it's also about the regulatory uh, perspective of mining. Okay, so that was the introduction. I wasn't used to, 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 to tell that, but it's important that, that everybody understands and I, I prefer to, to tell it uh, double so that we're all on the same page before going along. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, here's... Uh, here, okay, okay. So here uh, is one picture you see of um, one uh, large-scale uh, mining operation, a uh, large-scale deployment of miners. And um, when I'm talking about cloud mining or large-scale mining, uh, I mean that large-scale mining is, for example, what we are doing is purchasing in large amounts the miners that at the beginning uh, the home miners were running at their homes and uh, deployed them in massive in masses at uh, ef uh, efficiency uh, optimized places where electricity is very low um, and where the cooling is optimized. For example, Iceland is one of our uh, bigger bigger points, um, bigger locations because uh, you literally just have to open the windows and find, of course, an uh, intelligent solution to. Uh, to, to cool the, the miners, but you don't have to pay for a very cheap, a very expensive uh, cooling system, and also the electricity is very low there, and not comparable to if you would run a, a mine here. So, yeah, this is uh, the large-scale mining part, and then cloud mining is basically linked to large-scale mining because uh, it's there. Uh, a cloud mining system has as an underlying a large-scale mining operation, but the difference is that uh, for cloud mining specifically, the mining and processing power is taken and sold uh, and uh, get a, a spread amongst the users, spread amongst the clients uh, who decide to, to go for uh, cloud mining. And that way it's a bit different. You are not, we are not, I mean, we also have our own farm that we're mining in our pockets, but mostly we're uh, offering the service to, to users to buy the hash power, buy the mining power, and just very easily and comfortab comfortably mining bitcoins using the most efficient system and the, the best uh, um, infrastructure and cheap electricity prices. Okay, so that now I think we have the, the uh, also defined what, what large scale mining and cloud mining is. And um, just to have a kind of uh, imagination um, what we're talking about I just want to I have one uh, video here that I would like to show you it's uh, it's not it's not by far our biggest but it's it's a time-lapse of a of a larger um, mine that we built up uh, it's an example of a high-density Bitcoin mining farm and uh, I just uh, play the video and you will see and have a more ima imagination um, how that looks like
think it's important to 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 have some kind of pictures about what we are talking here. Uh, so just wanted to um, show you that. Yeah. So now uh, to the regulatory uh, side, uh, which is the actual topic here. Um, Actually, I wanted to go more deep and more in, in detail about the bid license, which is the regulatory uh, document uh, for providing the regulations also for on the mining market in the United States. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, this uh, the bid license is not uh, completely out yet, and it's not um, the final version. It's still discussed. We had this uh, uh, before in the in the panel. Um, so it's, uh, it's difficult for now to make any conclusions, but what we can say um, is one statement from Benjamin Lossky, um, who was uh, giving a keynote speech at the Money 2020, and he was saying that mining and mining pools per se will not be regulated. And I think that's a very, very strong statement, and uh, of course that gives uh, quite a lot of uh, confidence for the miners. Um, and I'm very sure that in the bid license itself, the statements will not change too much. Maybe they will regulate um, mining-related businesses who are building applications on top of that, but I'm very confident that the statement of Ben Lossky uh, that mining and mining boots per se will not be regulated will continue to hold. So, um, at the moment, uh, I, I have... I'm actually sorry, but I, there's not much, too much to say about that um, because I don't, you don't want to. I don't want to draw any conclusion that later on are not not valid. So I prefer to to wait. I actually hope that by now the bid license is already out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it took more more than expected, and but we will. I'm, I'm very confident we will soon have uh, a final version of of the bid license. Okay, so yeah, since this, the situation is now like that, um, I would uh, rather prefer to uh, mention a very important uh, topic here, um, which really everybody in the mining world should know. Uh, it's an, a rising threat in the market, and um, it's very. And we're doing a lot of work to educate people about that. Um, I'm talking about um, a, a rising or the rising amounts of uh, Ponzi schemes uh, in the mining market. Um, a lot of people who are uh, new to it fall into this trap and uh, lose a lot of money. And um, it's, it's important that everybody hears about that. And it's, it's not only that, that it's a small amount, it's, it's a growing amount. So more and more people are doing this scam and, take, and stealing customer money. So that even more highlights the fact that it's important to, to spread the word about it. So what am I talking about? Um, a Ponzi scheme, in, in particular linked to, to cloud mining or, or large-scale mining operations, is that a company is um, pretending to be a cloud mining company or pretending to be a, uh, a company that is doing large-scale mining um, and taking customers' funds to sell hash power, um, but effectively doesn't have, don't have anything in the back, and just take the customer's money and then pay out the users as if they would mine, but they don't mine. So everybody is thinking, oh yeah, they are mining at very good prices. Um, it's running really well, but instead there there's nothing in the back. They're just taking the money from the from the users and uh, paying them slowly out. And uh, of course, you know, I mean, this scheme cannot uh, hold endlessly. There's nothing behind. So this, uh, the, the conclusion of that is that uh, at some point the, 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 the Ponzi scheme is collapsing and a lot of people lose a lot of money. And um, the sad thing on that is that uh, it's not only one company who, who has done that or who's doing it, it's more companies and it's more and more companies who are doing it because it seems to be a very profitable uh, fraud and very profitable market and people who are running these uh, operations are anonymous and they don't have anything to lose. And you, and you can do it with Bitcoin, of course, because you, you can keep completely anonymous. So, yeah, this is the, the biggest threat because 
I mean, you, you have to imagine, you, you come in the market, in the cloud mining market, I can already tell you now there are more than 20 or, or 30 companies uh, who, who don't have anything, who are just pretending, who are anonymous, unknown, don't show any faces, and um, people see very good prices and, and think, wow, this is, this is it, let's, let's try it, and then end up losing a lot of money. And the, the owners of, the, of the, the scam are just banishing and then taking the customer's money and then maybe say, oh, that was a very nice business, let's, let's start a new one. We, nobody is tracking us, nobody gets us. So this is the real threat behind it. So now I want to provide you a, um, what kind of preventive measures can, can users and customers uh, take in order not to run in this kind of a trap. Also, I don't, I don't want to now specifically uh, tell hey, this, this business is uh, not right, it's going to be very unprofessional. I, I think everybody has to make his own decision. But um, I think the, the, the points that are listed here are the most important measures to to not run into a wrong, uh, into this, in such a kind of trap or give the money to a wrong business. So the first is the point that I already mentioned. Um, it's the an anonymity. So if, if a company um, hides their faces, there must be something, uh, a reason to it. Um, I understand, especially in Bitcoin, there are companies who really want to stay private, uh, but um, most of the time, it doesn't have the most, uh, doesn't have the best uh, reason for that. So if a company doesn't show anything, doesn't know a face, or there are even even companies who who pretend uh, to to be a registered company, but don't are not. So you can do research; you will recognize that it's registered under fake names. Um, this is all about this uh, the, the un anonymity point. Uh, the next thing is the transparency. Um, if someone doesn't have pictures, or the, the new trend now is that uh, companies, um, I know actually one, one scan that is taking our pictures, what we are publishing, because we highlight the transparency very, very, very well. We are even uh, flying our bigger investors to, uh, to the facilities uh, with a helicopter uh, in, in Iceland, um, so that really they, they can see everything. Um, but uh, it's clearly not, not everybody is like that. And there are people, there are companies even that are taking our material, or our uh, pictures and Photoshop it and uh, change it a little bit and then publish it on the website. And uh, sometimes they are doing it in such a stupid way that you are really questioning the world. I mean, for example, there is uh, one company that uh, takes our farm and then um, put, put, puts, extends it three times longer and, uh, and, put, and in the back there is a stone wall, you know, and uh, how the hell can you operate a, a mining uh, farm without any cooling airflow, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just standing there and behind is a, a stone wall, no, no airflow. Um, this thing will get so hot that it's not, it's not possible and, you know, so, um, it's, it's quite sad to see uh, things like that, and especially for an undereducated, how, how can an undereducated see this? I mean, yeah. Um, so that's a very, very important point. But I think if you have some more points and you you go clever uh, through the systems and, and check all all those points, and s maybe two are are not really clear, uh, you already can smell that there's uh, something not not uh, hundred percent correct. Um, next point would be: Is the product realistic? Uh, I've also seen that uh, there are uh, companies who, who, who say, hey, you, you, you can buy a super miner from us. Um, on the one day, it just mines triple uh, of, of the uh, amount that it usually would mine. And, uh, <laughs> and you can press a button and then it just uh, boosts the, the performance. It's totally crap. Well, if, 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 if it would mine on one day very, uh, very nice results and would have a boost in the performance, why shouldn't you just run it like that? You, yeah, you can always boost it, right? It's, it's, there's nothing behind that. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just uh, getting people involved and, um, and showing them, hey, we have to super mine, we're better than the, than the rest. And also, uh, very important is, um, yeah, uh, as people are investing, um, they're especially, it's important for the first days, um, and, or generally, they want to see the, the return. 
Um, and there are companies that are boosting the returns, the fake returns, and make it unrealistically high in the first uh, days. Uh, until, uh, so that people see, wow, they're paying out huge amounts. I will break even in a very short time. But there's also nothing behind that. It's just thin air, and they're just using that for word, for users to uh, spread the word and saying, hey, they're paying out extreme high returns. If this continues for the next two months, uh, I, I will have double of my investment back. But uh, these are not holding two months, of course, and they will shut down probably after a few days. Uh, last point, uh, is the price realistic? I think this is a, a point that is quite uh, difficult uh, to understand for, for uneducated, because you, you don't know how, what, what, how low can a price be, but I think that uh, if it's one thing you can you can um, remember on that, uh, if it's way off, then then competitors that are valid, that you know and are trusted and valid, uh, then you can you can make at least a question mark behind that when you are doing your examination of a of a cloud mining provider. All right. So um, that was uh, the preventive measures for the customers. And now I uh, want to give, uh, as a last point, the preventive measures uh, for authorities and regulators, um, because in the end, uh, someone has to stop this, right? At, at the moment, it's just more and more anonymous providers uh, popping up. And as long as people are, are running in the traps, they're making more money and the, the, the fraud market is growing. So um, one way, and we're actively also uh, talking to, to regulators and, um, um, and want to communicate with them, uh, in order to, to, to really uh, improve the situation. Um, and I think they all also respect it uh, to, to see that there are companies like us that are really engaging that this uh, turns into a better uh, situation. Um, one suggestion uh, from my side, uh, what would be important would be um, that a regulator is performing uh, or let's perform an audit of uh, a company that uh, the company really has all the hash power uh, covered that it's sold. Because, you, you, I mean, even if, there's a, even if there are pictures of some farms, um, uh, you, it can be that it's only half of the hash power that they, are sold, that they sold out to customers. So, um, that's very important. Um, like, I mean, exchanges are also doing this audit, right? They're, uh, Checking whether they have the funds all the time ready, not not to uh, run into a Mount Gox situation uh, again, um, and that a similar uh, procedure can be done uh, with cloud mining companies. Uh, next thing, checking whether the hash power is really owned by the provider contractually and enough electricity is secured. Um, that's also because, for example, someone could say, "Okay, I'm going out to Genesis Mining. I'm uh, renting out." Uh, huge amounts of hash power, uh, 20 peta hash or whatever, and um, and then I'm, 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 I'm renting it for three days, and I'm showing everybody, hey guys, here we are, we have this massive amount of hash power, it's real, the, the wallet that where it's mined to is belonging to us, um, but certainly this is not valid, right, so they have to really check whether the hardware itself, or at least there is a contract that really secures them enough hash power, and also, which is also very important, the electricity. And I'm not saying this uh, uh, without reason, because there has been companies who have the, the hardware and the, the mining power, but were not able to, to have enough electricity um, for a longer time. So they were shut down in the electricity, which resulted in the default of the company. Um, or, for example, the electricity is uh, too high, uh, for example, because uh, company, they started when the Bitcoin price was at 1,000, they didn't care about the electricity rates, then the Bitcoin price fell down, and then they uh, miscalculated themselves and realized, oh my god, our electricity bill is way too high, we cannot continue to offer it. And uh, I think the last point would be to identify uh, service providers, which is actually a uh, standard procedure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, there, is no, there is no reason for a uh, a cloud mining company to be anonymous. There's really no reason. Um, and th that, that way I would, I would really say that uh, they should, at least they should identify the, the owners of, of, a, of a cloud mining company uh, in order to prevent anonymous guys uh, taking customer money and just run away.
Okay, so yeah, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, thanks for, the, for your time. Uh, I, would, I would say we're going to the, to the question round. Yeah, sure. Alan, how do you feel? It's technically our lunch break, but uh, can we let Marco answer some questions? But we just know we've got to be back at uh, 120 for the next session. But. Oh, yeah, you the tag that got you in here, make sure you bring it back. But yeah, I certainly have questions. So yeah, so if, if you guys need time for lunch, take off if you want to hear Marco answer some questions. Uh, I think you benefit from the lunch break, so here you go. All right. So, uh, sorry, the, the behind was... Yeah. First. Yeah, as said, that's that's very good. But as said, I mean, uh, you can rent it. You, I can rent uh, 100 per hash uh, tomorrow. So, so would it help if, uh, say, uh, an independent third-party wallet provider was able to provide that information to the Bitcoin Network and then the Bitcoin Network and the Bitcoin Network? So, if every address that you just pay out in the Bitcoin Network, yeah, um, yeah, I think that that would kind of an a uh, good way, a uh, good direction where we where to go with the audits. There are there are things that needs to be taken care of additionally, like uh, if someone is uh, um, mining on a pool and not doing the solo mine. But uh, I think that the, the direction is correct, and I think this is the way, uh, the right way to approach it. Yeah. Sir. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, um, to be honest, uh, it's at the, we, we want to be as uh, transparent as possible, uh, and we are doing a lot of engagement to do so. We are even showing uh, videos and pictures of the farm. We are now actually also uh, soon uh, putting a live stream of uh, of a camera, all, one, um, filming the, the farm all the time. So that's also a, a very uh, innovative uh, approach. Um, Regarding numbers of the total hash power, I, I, I need to be a bit uh, more sensitive uh, because our uh, leaders are saying that uh, um, also regarding competitive uh, uh, advantage or we would maybe give too much information about competitors, so... Yeah? Uh, how seriously is fiscal security taken into know, like, the government, the government has a military-grade fiscal security act? Get it. B very good point. Um, actually, uh, there has happened uh, in the past um, um, people who, who stole miner out of a running uh, operation. It's, it just happened in China. It's crazy. Yeah, it was one of the also one of the bigger uh, providers who ran out of business because it, uh, it, it, the next day they came and the mine was empty. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I mean hiding. I mean really. I, Hiding is, it's, it's, I, we are also very sensitive, right? I mean, we show pictures, but we, we, we cannot uh, disclose the locations, right? It's too, it's too, it's too, yeah, it's too crazy. It's, there's so much money involved, and, yeah, and so much people who would, yeah. And, uh, we, we also experience a lot of, uh, now, uh, industrialized uh, espionage. For example, there were some, some guys uh, visiting us, um, and they, yeah, they, they were very obvious that they, they, they just wanted to see and ask questions and then just they left again without any comment. So um, it's a sensitive thing. And regarding your question, um, yeah, uh, security-wise, um, I can say from us, we're working together with uh, security companies that uh, build uh, sensors, moving, moving detection, uh, cameras, um, alarm system, uh, and of course we have 24-7 uh, um, guides uh, around the facilities who are taking care. Um, these are one, one of, me of the measures that are uh, taking concern regarding um, the uh, stability um, uh, and, and security. But also, I think it, you also had uh, addressed the uh, redundancy thing, right? In the data center, what happens? Are there multiple layers of redundancy? Uh, also, very good point. Um, I would say if 
uh, it doesn't make sense for mining uh, to have a, uh, a highest tier data center with three level of redundancy because it economically doesn't make sense. You would prefer, you rather have uh, backup uh, generators to put to, to put to, uh, put in if there is a, um, a drop of electricity uh, rather than uh, having a, a, a multiple layer um, redundant uh, data center. It's too, it's just, it costs too much because mining, the most important, one of the most important points is the electricity. It's the most important uh, component, especially, uh, especially now uh, when you look at it, uh, when you look at mining in, in a game theoretical framework, right? You, when, when you have the lowest electricity bill in the end for the given amount of hash power, you will be able to continue mining while others are in the reds. And when others are in the reds, that means that they're lead, dropping off their, uh, uh, shutting down their farm, uh, meaning that you get a more, a, a bigger share of the pie, of the reward of the 3,000 uh, bitcoins per day. So it's all about that. And, and uh, people are really looking and uh, doing a lot of research to find electricity uh, sweet spots on the planet. It's literally a war to find the places where is the cheap, the most cheapest, uh, the cheapest electricity. And, I'm, I'm glad that we are in a very good position, in a very good spot. Um, we are continuing, and um, we we are uh, we have turned out to be uh, we, we have developed ourselves as uh, the biggest cloud mining provider so far. Others ran out of business because they decided to go in a conventional data center, having a three-layer three, uh, uh, redundant system, and um, they were sued by the data center because they were not able to pay the electricity bill. And that's the difference, right? And, and that's the key point, and that, that's what gives you the competitive advantage. I hope I could uh, clarify. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Get it, get it, yeah. Yeah, um, the, our energy that we're um, take, that we're uh, consuming in Iceland is 100% green. Um, so that's a, a very good uh, point. Uh, it would be ethically uh, a bit questionable if you would uh, r uh, turn on a nuclear power plant uh, <laughs> for the mining farm. Um, but yeah, I think there. I heard some approaches there. Uh, some some people are thinking about it. But uh, in, in our situation, here, it's 100% green energy. I think uh, we have everything covered. So uh, enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much for your attention.